20. Please stand. Let us pray. <coughs> Go before us, O Lord, in this act of service and in all our undertakings, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may always give you praise, and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. The hymn 539, 539, the red hymn. Together we pray, O oh God, by the leading of a star, you revealed your Son, Jesus Christ, to the Gentiles. Grant that we, your church, may be a light to the nations, so that the whole world may come to see the splendor of your glory and the depth of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The call for the day. Together. 
Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading from Holy Scripture. A reading from Isaiah. There will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Nebuchadnezzar. But in the latter time, he made glorious the way of the sea and the island beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in great darkness have seen a great light, and those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exulted with a divided thunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors, you have broken as the day of Gideon. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 27 responsibly by the half verse to show you the Lord. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? One thing I have asked of the Lord, one thing I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the fair beauty of the Lord. And to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling, and set me high upon the rock. Even now he lifts upon my head. I love my enemies round Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an obligation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, the Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me. Your turn will be a servant in displeasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Those who sat in the region, in shadow of death, light has dawned. At that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Let the children come forward. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Father Mario. All right. Now, do you ever have to make tough choices? Yes? What are some of the tough choices you have to make? Yes, Zoe? To decide if I want to take the consequence of hitting my knee, or like hitting her back, or, or take the um, consequence of just not all right, so you have to make, that's a very tough decision, right? Do I retaliate and box her up, right? <laughs> or do I just kind of stay humble and not do anything? All right, Brett? Um, like, um, if I should play with my brother and not get yelled at, or if I should just <laughs> sit down and relax. <laughs> oh, just sit and relax. So, okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read into it, but I hear you, right? That's a tough decision. You wanna relax or you have to play with your brother? Yeah. Alright. Yes, Ivy? Whether or not I should really listen to one of my friends to stay on the Ah, whether or not I should really listen to one of my friends. Yes, Ava. If I should eat cotton candy or jelly beans. Alright, that's a tough decision. Cotton candy or jelly beans? I don't know how you choose. You're, okay, now we have a conversation about which candy they're going to choose, right? <laughs> Jelly beans or cotton candy? Well, what about sometimes coming to church or staying home? Is that a tough decision? Uh, no. No? no? Yeah. Our parents decide for us. <laughs> <laughs> Our parents decide for us. Yes, Jake? Um, you make tough decisions too? Tough decisions. Things like being home mm -hmm. and deciding what you want to do. Yes, that is a tough decision, right? Because sometimes you just want to sleep or you just want to play a game, yeah. right? I want to yeah. sleep. You want to sleep? I'd rather sleep. I'd rather sleep the whole day. The whole day. All right. Yeah. So you all would rather sleep the whole day yeah. than to do your chores? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'd rather, I'd rather do fun things than play outside and get exercise. All right, play outside and get exercise. Well, I see you all have a tough decision each day to make, right? Tough decisions every day. Now, do you follow anyone, right? Do you like any singers? Do you like any Disney characters, right? Do you watch their shows? Yes, who do you like, Emily? I like if. Graham hits me or do I hit him back? <laughs> in the face. And oh, 
Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Who do you? Yes, Zoe. My favorite character is Stitch, but sometimes I. But in my old house, I, I was scared of him with three knives, but then the one day I watched like two movies and then I was like, You weren't scared. So, who, who likes Stitch? You like Stitch? All right. Yes, Nora? Who do you follow? Who do you like? You're not sure yet? You just like Stitch? All right. Yes? Wednesday Adams. Who's that? Wednesday. Wednesday Adams? Yeah, from Adam. Oh yeah, I watched that. Clearly, clearly, I'm out of the loop. <laughs> right? Because I was coming to ask you if you like Justin Bieber or Taylor Swift. What? Yeah, who are they, right? I didn't even know. I love that girl. I was thinking, do you like Pink Floyd or Queen? But that's my age. Right? Y'all don't know with that. <laughs> Yes, Scott. My favorite character is you. Oh. 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 And you had better be talking about Super Mario. <laughs> All right. Do you like Super Mario or Father Mario? Right. Uh, that's a hard decision. What? All right. That's a tough decision. Well, sometimes. We make choices to follow people. And sometimes everybody who is in the limelight, they, they are called influencers. You know, it's it's a it's I guess it's a real job. They make a lot of money. But um uh, they want you to follow them. And why do you think people want you to follow them? Why do your friends want you to follow them? If at all. Yes, I mean. So that they can feel important. So that they can be important. Right, that's what happens. You know, I, I, yeah, the person with the most followers, they are more important. That's how it seems, right? Popular. But Jesus asks us to follow him. He was going by the sea in Galilee one day, and he saw two men fishing, Simon, Peter, and Andrew. And he said, come and follow me. And you know what they did? They immediately got up and followed Jesus. Then later on, he saw the sons of Zebedee, James and John, and he said to them, follow me. And guess what they did? Follow him. Yes. They made a choice to follow Jesus. Do you think following Jesus is sometimes a hard choice? No. I like it. Why isn't it hard? Maybe. Go ahead, Brett. Because Jesus is... Um is the is Christ. Yes. And we sh we should follow him, yes, Zoe? It depends on what I was doing. If I was doing like <laughs> chores or something, maybe I would want to go there. But if I was like really into something and I was in the middle of I might not want to leave. Exactly. Right, yes, Ava. It would be easy to say yes to follow him because he's really our savior and we should follow him. You know, in theory, that makes a lot of sense, and it is right. I want to take two more, right? Go ahead, Scott. Okay, so it's not easy. A lot of the time, just like we were just talking about, you have to make hard decisions. But you have to think about it this way. If Jesus is really Christ, if he's asking us to follow him, it's for a good reason. Yes, that is that is true. It is for a good reason. And sometimes we don't want that good reason. Go ahead, Eileen. Uh, if he's really good, then like, we're like, oh, you're a good person. I'm going to go with you. Right, you're going to go with Christ because he's a good person. But sometimes it's hard. So let me show you why it's hard. Because following Jesus is not just about, oh, let me love people, let me be kind. It's making tough decisions. Like, am I going to back talk? Do you back talk your parents? No. 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 Yes. Yes. Do you tell the truth all the time? No. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? It's all the time. You tell the, you should tell the truth all the time. Very good, Jake. Sometimes it has to like protect something that you don't want it to break. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it depends on who you're trying to tell the truth to. Oh, no, 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 you tell the truth all the time, all the time, right, so, stranger danger, yes, so let me ask you this, 
in following Jesus, you're going to have to make some tough decisions. Um, and I know that there's a lot more involved in just saying no, but let's, for this purposes, if somebody is trying to get you to steal something, is that following Jesus? No! If someone is trying to get you to say sorry to another person and to offer forgiveness, is that following Jesus? Yes! Yes, but that's following Jesus. If someone is saying, don't listen to your parents, is that following Jesus? No! If someone is saying, try to come to church as often as possible and behave, is that following Jesus? Yes! If someone is saying, before you get breakfast during coffee hour, make sure you bring Father Mario some breakfast. Is that following Jesus? Yes! Very good. Because that's being kind. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very good. Well, Jesus calls us to follow him. And I want us to take our time this week to think about it. It's a tough decision, but try always to follow Jesus. Right? How many breakfasts would you get then? Yay! Listen, don't worry about how much I can eat. Just follow Jesus. <laughs> Come on, stand up. Jesus said, Jesus said, follow me. Follow me. Will you try with me? Will you try with me? Each day. Each day. To choose Jesus. To choose Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to your God, our rock and our redeemer. <laughs> Amen. Well, John is in jail and Jesus is on the run. Right? Matthew tells us that Jesus withdraws to Galilee after John was arrested. Ella, was he scared? Terrified. Terrified. Exactly. Did he need a moment to recharge? Absolutely. There was fear in Jesus, perhaps, at least in my thinking. Because it's okay and quite normal to feel fear and to feel afraid in dark times. When life is going haywire and people tell you, don't be afraid, don't worry. What do you feel like doing to them? Don't tell me. But it's okay to be afraid. Jesus seemed to be afraid, but he also chose to get out of a very terrifying situation of imperial violence. Sometimes, dear friends, we must learn to walk away from situations. Sometimes, Luke, we have to choose our battles carefully. Not everything, Melissa, requires an immediate reaction from us. Not everything requires us to stand up and fight. Hannah? Exactly. Be patient. Sometimes we must wait until it's the right time to say what we have to say. You agree with me? Because sometimes we could say things at the wrong time. Anybody ever caught you off guard at the wrong time? And then your true colors have to come out, Bruce? Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> Y'all ain't going to agree with me, but sometimes Christians have to say some things and do some things because people catch us at the wrong time, right? Exactly. Um, I heard someone say, uh, as a Christian, you should be um, a pacifist. And I said, well, if you rub me the wrong way, I will pacifist at you. <laughs> right? But anyway, moving right along. It was not time for Jesus to stand up to the empire. There will be a time later to face such threats head on. So John's arrest was an impetus for Jesus fleeing. But there is more. He withdraws to a specific place. So Matthew is very careful in telling us where Jesus withdraws. He withdraws to Capernaum, to the territories of Zebulun and Naphtali, or Naphtali as some people would say. Zebulun and Naphtali were sons of Jacob, which meant that these lands, these territories, were a part of Israel's promised land. The problem was they were currently occupied by Rome. They were under oppression. And so in telling us that Jesus withdrew to these lands and he made his home there, Matthew is telling us something very important. 
He's letting us know, one, that God is fulfilling his promise to be a light to the nations, but also that God is with us in dark and oppressing times. As Isaiah predicted, the people have seen a great light. And so even in the midst of our oppression, Paul, God is with us. Can you and I trust that God is with us even in dark times? Even when things seem to be going awry, even when things seem to be falling apart, even when life is troublesome, can we trust that God is with us? How have you walked in darkness lately? Jesus invites us to let him be the light in our dark times. And so he makes his home in Capernaum, thereby announcing God's presence. And he calls people to repent and to turn to God. In calling people to repentance, despite John's arrest, Jesus reminds us that God is acting even in the midst of oppression. The kingdom of heaven, Matthew tells us, has come near. Now, I know you might not pick this up, but Matthew, unlike the other gospels, uses the term kingdom of heaven. The other gospels use the term kingdom of God. Matthew, too sacred of a Jew, regards the name of God too sacred, so he uses the term heaven instead. But no matter the nomenclature, the point is made that even in dark times, God is acting. God is still working. God is still working God's purpose out. Who needs to remember that this morning? That wherever you are in life, God is still working his purpose out. I mentioned to somebody the other day when they said to me that they were so uncomfortable in a space. I said, remember, you are never in a room where you don't belong. You are never in a room. Others may think that, but you don't think that for one second because you are never in a room where you don't belong. God is working God's purpose out. And so Jesus comes there announcing repentance. He is also calling us to choose between two kingdoms, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of some other, in this case, Rome. It is a basic reminder when he says to the fishermen, follow me, that we cannot serve two masters. This is part of his message throughout Matthew. We cannot serve God and mammon. We cannot be lukewarm in Revelation. Either we are hot or we are cold. We can't say we love Jesus on Sunday, and then act differently on Monday, well, Sunday afternoon, right? Like me when my team loses. It's the very thing that the two sets of brothers are asked to do and quite frankly did. They had to make a choice, a difficult choice. Jesus says, follow me, choose me, and I will make you fish for people. By choosing to follow Jesus, the brothers choose God's rule over the Roman rule. They choose to fish their land and the people in it for God's purposes rather than exploit others for Rome's gain. Where in our lives is God calling us to choose? To choose between God's way over and against the ways of the world. Over and against the Rome's in our lives. Rome being the socioeconomic and the political practices that oppress people and deny them of their basic dignity. Where is God asking us to make better choices? And we might think, this is something political. Sometimes it's something as simple as recycling. Now, anybody here believes in recycling? Right? Do you think the recycling actually works the way it should be? Yeah, 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 just stop. Exactly, right? That's not the point. I'm going to put my, exactly, cover your heads. But we do our best to put our little bottles and plastics in the separate, you know, and in, you know, where I live, it's so, anyhow, uh, let me leave that up for another day. <laughs> the way, yeah. You can't put this, you can't put that, just plastic bottles and bottles. Nothing else. So what's the point? But anyway. That's Pennsylvania. That, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> so we're in our lives. Are we straddling the fence between two kingdoms? Where is God asking us to make a simple choice to choose him? We're invited to follow Jesus. Well, the gospel reading 
challenges us in many ways. And I invite us today to reflect on three of those ways. Very quickly, the call to follow. First, repent. That was the message of Jesus. Where in our lives is God calling us to repent? Repentance in biblical thought involves more than a simple apology. It is change. It is changing our direction from one way to the other. I remember we used to say repentance is a 360 degree turn. That is absolutely wrong. Right, Gail? Because if you make a 360 degree turn, right back where you started. Right back where you started. And some days it seems that way, but we're to make a 180 degree turn, head in a different direction. Change our behavior, change our lives. So the challenge here in following Jesus, he calls us first to repent. Where is God asking us to change our lives today? Second, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Now Jesus was not some sort of narcissist who just wanted people to be subjects to him, right? He wasn't saying, follow me, because as Eileen said, I want to be popular. He was really saying, imitate me. Join in imitating me, brothers and sisters. That's what Paul says of Christ. He wants us to take on God's values and priorities and hopes of the world. In what ways is Jesus asking us then to follow him? But the task in following Jesus is also a challenge to evangelize. I will make you fish for people. And we don't need special qualifications to evangelize. They were fishermen, and that's the point. Jesus is challenging us to fish for people. And he's reminding us that in following God, it's not just all about our fulfillment, it is about others' fulfillment as well. Anybody know the shape of a cross? It's vertical and it's horizontal. Ever wonder why? This is my theory. Vertical means we have a direct relationship with God. And out of that relationship with God, we should extend that love to others. Across. And so, dear friends, what Jesus requires is not ability. It is availability. The disciples immediately left everything and they made themselves available. Where in our lives are we not making ourselves available for God and God's purposes? God is calling us to make ourselves available. And finally, before you fall asleep on me, the challenge here is to let go. Immediately, they left everything and followed Christ. What is God asking you to let go of in your life? What is God asking me to let go of? Old grudges? Ideologies? Certain relationships, unforgiveness, rage toward others. James and John left their father. Simon and Andrew left their livelihood. Now, I'm not sure God is calling you or me to just leave our livelihood or to leave our family. No. But keep in mind that following Jesus sometimes requires us to make sacrifice, to let go of certain things. To the rich young ruler, he said, sell everything. To the young man who wanted to go and birth, bury the dead, he said, let the dead bury the dead. And he said to all of the disciples, if anyone wants to come and follow me, they must deny themselves, take up their cross, then come and follow me. The point is, in following Jesus, we must learn to let go. For if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. It's time to share. What is God asking us to share like a snake? to let go of that dead skin, and to move into a new creation. Anyone ever cleaned out a closet? Oh my gosh, I did it yesterday. Huge garbage bag, right? And I had to shed not just my closet. My closet was telling me I need to shed weight too, right? Because I no longer have two and a half abs, it's one and a half. But I got to work back to get it. The point I'm making is, that was a hard process yesterday because memories, sentimental value, but more than that, it's giving away things that people gave to you and you remember the fondness of it as well. Letting go can be hard and that's the difficulty we are faced with. It's gonna be hard to give up certain behaviors. It's gonna be hard to give up certain relationships. Unless parents are willing to let go, right, Jen? 
they'll never experience the satisfaction of watching their children's potential, right? And so sometimes, Julie, we have to kick them out of the nest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that. You're right. You're, like it. You're not going to be around mommy forever. Not in that sense. <laughs> Unless we let go of yesterday, we can't fully embrace the possibilities of today. When people have difficulty letting go of the past, I say to them, make today so awesome that yesterday gets jealous, Kieran. Make today so awesome that yesterday gets jealous. So think this week, where in my life is God calling me like Elsa to let it go, let it go? Keep in mind that in letting go, Jesus is calling us to something greater, greater purpose, greater fulfillment, greater joy, greater inner peace. Let go and let God. Amen. <clears throat> Let us stand now and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, page 358. Three, five, eight. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, the last God, life for life, true God, true God, the God of not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and with his amen. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended to heaven, and he received at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge no baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people today are form two, found on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer. Bound together in Christ, let us pray with one heart and mind, <coughs> singing, O oh Lord, hear my prayer. and people pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that we may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Warren Rowan Walsh. Alec Rivers, and all those who serve in our armed forces. Please add your own petitions, either silently or aloud. I 
Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. All these things we lift to you as we sing. sisters in Christ. Let us share in peace with each other. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, church. Good morning, priests. Pleasure to welcome all of you here this morning. Thank God for your presence. Pray God's continued blessings upon you. I want to extend wonderful birthday greetings to those celebrating birthdays this week. One in church, the one and only Nora Carter. <laughs> Nora, how old are you going to be? Today's my birthday. Oh, come, Nora, come on up. How old are you today? Seven going on 17, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So you're going to sing happy birthday. Anyone else? Not listed? All right. To Nora. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you always, Nora. Thank you for bringing you <laughs> and joy to this church. We have an announcement from our... Yes, yes. Rep, yes. the announcement from Emily. Um, she's home with a little one getting over um, whatever virus. But um, she's working on a new way to sign up for flowers for the altar. And we do only have a few weeks left until we get... Yes, Ash Wednesday, when there will be none, so there's still a couple weeks left. And she um, has asked me to ask you to text or phone or email, and it's all in the directory, the church directory. All those ways are in the directory. If you would like to sponsor flowers between now and Ash Wednesday, and then subsequently after that, and pretty soon she's hoping to announce a new method for you to sign up. All right, thank you. So flowers. I want to remind you that next week our service is at 9 and then following we have our AGM meeting. We also have a Zoom link. If you're going to be traveling and not able to be with us, you can join us via Zoom. I'm pretty sure Linda would like us to all uh, sign up for a little dish. She didn't say it, but if you can bring something so that we can all fellowship uh, thereafter. So, you know, Come to church, make, clear your calendars next Sunday. 
service is at 9, and the bad news is there's no sermon, right? Not for the adults. For the children, yes, right? Come on, y'all can make me feel good, like, oh my gosh. Ah, good. And the Grammy goes to St. George's. <laughs> good act. No, but um, we have our AGM, and then we have our fellowship thereafter. So please join us next Sunday. Bible study resumes this week, Genesis 11 through 25, or chapter 12 through 25. Uh, please read and come prepared with your questions. We also have some uh, new social media. Uh, Megan, why don't you tell us the reason behind it? <laughs> well, we're just trying to really boost our community outreach um, and get more followers for Jesus. Yes. <laughs> so. Follow us. Right. We were told that we were dated by just using Facebook, and the young people don't use those means anymore. Oh. Uh, right, Heather? I know. I no you have no idea. <laughs> what do they use? TikTok, Twitter. But we, we're not doing Snapchat, I can tell you that much. Twitter. Do they be tweeting? We don't tweet. We don't tweet. We don't tweet. People. LinkedIn. Do we use LinkedIn? Hannah use LinkedIn. Who are we? I'm still on LinkedIn. Insta. Insta. TikTok. See? All right. Now we have the debate. Us. Us young people say TikTok. Yeah. Anyhow, they're all on page 19, page 10 of the bulletin. Please sign up and spread the word to get St. George's out there. We have a number of things coming up as well, and please open your ears to them in the ensuing weeks. There's some diocesan um, information there. If anybody would like to join a retreat or feel like they want a women's weekend or a men's retreat, the dates are there. You may sign up. All right. I think those are... Do you want to say something about the 26th? Yes. And yeah, you want to prepare them? So February 26th is going to be Children's Sunday, Good Sunday. So did Miss, I don't know if Miss Stacy talked to you guys about it yet. Yes, yes. She did. Okay, okay so. Talk today. Sweet. So, oh, I need to. So um, the children will be doing all of the work that Sunday. Um, no sermon from Father Mario again. Sorry, guys. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So the kids, um, you know, Little all the way to Luke and Samson and Hannah will be giving sermons. They will be on the altar, ushering, everything. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. All of you. So thank you. Get it ready. 26. The 26. We're also going to have a visitor that day. And yes. We are going to. The, um. She, she moved it to February? She's going to come on that date. Okay, so she's moved it to February. She was supposed to come next week. She was going to try. She had uh, child care issues. Okay. So the next available will be the date of our new Sunday. Which is great. So that is our youth diocesan officer. I did offer that to her. and she. What's one more? What's one more, right? All right. That being said, may you all have a wonderful week. Let us continue to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
and 61, the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all who come here to heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night, he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. the memorial of our redemption, O Father. In this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us of all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the light is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray the post communion prayer. Page 365. Together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds rooted in the knowledge and love of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.